Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Elizabeth and I'm an indie game developer. I recently participated in Low Res Game Jam 2023, during which I made a fast-paced wildfire fighting tower defense game called Ember Grove, and I wanted to tell you how I made it. This game jam was the first two-week game jam I've ever done. I've done several weekend game jams and I've also done a month-long game jam. So it was really nice to do a jam where I had a bit more time to add in some more complex mechanics than usual, but the jam also wasn't so long that it felt like it just dragged on for too long. Unlike most of the other jams I've done, this game jam didn't have a mandatory theme. It had several optional themes, but the only required restriction was that the game's resolution was only 64 by 64 pixels. So on screen, while the player is playing the game, they can only see 64 by 64 pixels at any one given time. I actually heard about this jam last year, but I wasn't able to participate then, so I was really excited to give it a try this year. I didn't have any specific ideas for what specific game I wanted to make, but I did know I wanted to try making a more arcade style game that gave a bite-sized but replayable experience. When I do a game jam, I try to pick a new genre or theme or mechanic that I haven't used before in a game so that I can try new things and further build my skill set. Generally, when I'm doing a game jam, I start off by brainstorming some possible game ideas and mechanics, and then once I've settled on one specific idea, I like to take my notebook and write down what those mechanics are, some more details of how they're going to work, and any other little notes about the game that I want to make sure I include. Then I usually start developing the game with some placeholder artwork and then afterwards I'll make the actual final artwork and add it in. I don't usually completely finish the game before I start working on the artwork, but I usually try to have at least a good portion of the game done because I've noticed that personally if I start working on the artwork before I start working on the gameplay, then I usually end up spending too much time on making the artwork absolutely perfect and I run out of time for actually making the game. After the main gameplay loop is done and I've added the final artwork, I'll add any menu screens I need, maybe a pause menu, any little bits of polish that I have time for, and I'll finish it off by making a pretty simple audio track and adding that in. For Ember Grove, I split my development stage into five sections. Map generation, the fire spreading, item placement, item behavior, and scoring. The gameplay loop of Ember Grove consists of a random map being generated, fire being spawned in on several different tiles, and then the level begins where the player can place several different types of items to fight the fires. Once the fire either has burnt all of the tiles on the map or once it is completely extinguished, the level is finished and scored. So I knew that before I could start on any of the firefighting mechanics, I had to have a map. I was excited to start working on the map because I finally got to implement some simple random map generation, which I've been wanting to try for a while, but none of my game jam ideas have really needed that, so I just haven't tried it yet. The random generation in Ember Grove is pretty simple. Each tile is placed one by one, left to right, and top to bottom. When a tile is placed, the game needs to determine if that tile is going to be a forest or a grassland tile. So it checks what the type of the surrounding tiles are and adjusts the probability of what that tile will be based on the surrounding tiles. So if a tile is surrounded by forest tiles, it'll be more likely to also be a forest tile. Whereas if it's surrounded by grass, it'll be more likely to be grass. This made it so that the map would look a little more like a real map instead of just a randomized selection of tiles. Once all of the tiles have been placed and their types decided, 
The map then selects one random tile to become a town. And once the town is placed, then the map is done. Once I finished the map generation mechanic, I started working on the fire and how it would behave. At the beginning of a level, the game selects three random tiles that are at least three spaces away from the town and spawns fires on those tiles. From there, the player takes control and the fire can spread. It was a bit difficult to balance the fire not being too easy to put out right at the beginning of the level while still not making it impossible to put out once it had spread across a large portion of the map. So I had the fire on each tile go through several stages before it was able to spread. When the tile is first set on fire, the fire starts out small and takes several seconds to grow into a full fire. Once it's become a full fire, it has to wait another length of time before it can spread to the surrounding tiles. At the beginning of the level, when the first fires are spawned, the game prevents the player from interacting with the game for a few seconds so that the fires can spread a little bit and won't be too easy to put out right at the beginning of the game. However, because the fire does take a good amount of time to spread, this means that even if it's covering a large swath of the map, it's still possible to stop it and win the game. Once I had the fire done, I moved on to the UI for placing items. The controls for this game are pretty simple, it's just mouse controls, and I was able to reuse some parts of my current game project Unread Messages to create a tile selection system in Ember Grove. So if you hover over a tile and click it, it pops up a menu that allows you to pick one of three item types. If you click off of the menu, it'll close the menu, and if you click one of the items, it will place it on that tile. You only have a limited amount of each item that you can place, so I had to find a way to convey those amounts in such a low resolution. At first, I tried to put numbers next to the icon of each item, but the numbers were just too big. So instead, each item in the menu just has a number of dots next to it that signifies how many items of that type you have left to place. Now that I was able to place items on tiles, it was time to work on those items actually doing things to fight the fire. There are three different types of items you can place on a tile. Water teams, fire breaks, and aerial assaults. The water teams automatically fight fires on all of the tiles around them, and they can be picked up and placed down any number of times, so you can move them around the map to fight whichever fire is the worst at any given moment. The fire breaks clear a single tile and make it impossible for the fire to spread to it, so they're good for forming barriers to block a fire into a certain section of the map. However, they do destroy the tile they're placed on, so you lose the points for that tile. And an aerial assault is just a big bucket of water that gets dropped on a single tile, which immediately extinguishes the tile and provides a few seconds of protection against fire spreading to it again. With all of these mechanics finished, I only had the scoring and the menus left to do, and since the scores were just multiplying the amount of unburnt tiles of each type by the value of that type of tile, it was pretty simple to implement the scoring screen. And of course, the start screen just had some fun title art and start button. I had started working on art before I was completely finished with development, and so I had gradually been incorporating it into the game. I really enjoyed the low res restriction on art because it made the artwork overall take less time to make because there was just less space to decide what to do with, but it did make creating some of the sprites a lot harder, especially the icons for each item type because I didn't have very much space in which to communicate what each item was. For example, for the water team, I had to try making several different versions of the icon before I settled on the little person icon. Sometimes I would make an icon and then ask someone else if they could tell what it was, and because it was so small, they couldn't. 
So I had to think carefully about what each icon would be and how that would work to convey what that item did, all while making them very, very small. At the end of the jam, I had some time left over to playtest, but when I did, I found that the game wasn't very balanced. If I was quick, I was able to easily put out the fires within seconds of the level starting, but if I waited even 10 seconds longer, it became nearly impossible to win. So I adjusted how long it took the fire to spread, and then adjusted the resource amounts so that the player had fewer water teams to use. This way, the player couldn't just surround the fires right at the beginning of the game and win without a fight. Before the end of the jam, I put together a simple soundtrack, put it in the game, and submitted it. Embergrove definitely isn't my best or my favorite game jam entry I've made, but it was a complete game, and I did enjoy making it. It was really fun to be able to reuse some code and techniques I used in my previous games and then build on those with new things I've learned. One of my favorite things about game jams is that with every game jam I do and entry I make, it's sort of like taking a snapshot of who I am as a game developer at that point in time. I've often gone back and replayed my past games and smiled because it reminds me of all the fun I had making those games and shows me how far I've come in my skills since then. And so even when I make a game that I don't really feel like it's my best, I still like it because it's like adding another entry in the timeline of my game dev journey. If you want to play Ember Grove, the link to do so is in the description below, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please leave a like, a comment, and or subscribe to the channel for more game dev content. Well, thanks for watching everybody, and I'll talk to you later. Bye!